The Last Duel is directed by Ridley Scott, and I have a love-hate relationship with that man because every single time that he makes a gladiator or an alien, we get a body of lies or a counselor. Yuck. So which category does The Last Duel fall into? Luckily for me, it does fall into the good column, and let me tell you why. Hey everybody, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm sending you all positive vibes your way, but if it's your first time here, then welcome, of course. If you guys like seeing early movie reviews like this, hang out live streams where we talk about movies and first time movie reactions, then this is the place for you. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate all the support from you guys. And so do my partners at Movie Scene Canada. Their link will be in the video description box below. But today, I'm gonna give you my honest, no BS take on The Last Duel and tell you if it's worth a watch. So. We got The Last Duel, directed by Ridley Scott, and for the first time since Good Will Hunting, we have Ben Affleck and Matt Damon sharing writing credits on this movie. Now, I'll tell you guys right now, if you guys watch the trailers for this movie, it makes this movie seem kind of like a Braveheart action period piece. It's not, though. Yes, there is some action in this movie, and it is very brutal, and they do a great job with it, but we'll talk about that later in a minute. This really is a drama about how the truth, the truth, can be manipulated by people in power and by society itself. Now, I went into this movie without knowing anything about the plot. All I knew was that it was Ridley Scott and that it had Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Jodie Comer, and Adam Driver in it. That's all I knew, and I went into it, again, not knowing anything. So I think that's really a great way to go into this movie. So I suggest doing that. But if you guys wanna know just the minor plot summary, and again, no major spoilers, then this is for you. Of course, this is really in the trailer as well, but I wanted to let you guys know that I went into this movie not knowing anything, and I really enjoyed my time with it, so I hope you guys can do the same, but if you guys are still here, then let's continue. So the story really is two squires are living in France and they are surviving. They're trying to get money, they're going into battle, they're trying to get land and title and, you know, marry up and, you know, they're trying to make the best possible life that they can for each other in 1300s France. Those two squires are Matt Damon's Jean and Adam Driver's Jacques, right? J and J. But Jean, Matt Damon's character, marries a woman named Marguerite, played by Jodie Comer. She's fantastic in this movie, by the way, but I will talk about that more in a minute. However, Jacques covets Jean's wife, Marguerite, and takes matters into his own hands and has his way with her. It's a very uncomfortable scene, so if you guys don't like seeing, you know, sexual assault on screen, or find it very uncomfortable, then, you know, this movie might be a lot to take in. But after Marguerite confesses what happened to her, Jean challenges Jacques, but after Marguerite confesses what happened to her, Jean challenges Jacques to a fight to the death, being the last duel. So what did I like about this movie? I like the structure. This movie is told to us in three chapters. The truth according to Jean, the truth according to Jacques, and the truth according to Marguerite. And what I like about it is that you're getting basically the same story three times, but from three different points of view, and every single time, little plot holes are filled in. So, you know, you get a picture, and then the next truth, the next chapter, you're getting a little bit of that picture filled in, but also you get to see some things from a different point of view and from a different angle, and you can see that, okay, I can see why this character perceived this action to be the way it was. And for me, that plot structure really kept me invested throughout the entire thing. It was really, really engaging. Now, before I talk about the performances and the direction and the production design and the overall film school report card of this movie, I wanted to talk about how this movie really affected me emotionally. History is written by the victors. This movie shows us how powerful the systematic misogyny was back in the day. And we see Marguerite and other women in the movie be treated like property and just supplements to males' pride and ego. Now this is opinion that I might get in a lot of shit for, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I think this movie did a much better job of tackling the subject matter of coming forward with a sexual assault allegation and just feeling the shame and the guilt and feeling like this system is oppressing you and not really wanting you to speak out than Promising Young Woman did. When I was watching that movie, and again, this is not getting into a review of that movie, I felt talked down to and I didn't really feel like it was genuine because I didn't really like the character. In this movie, it really made me take a look at, you know, my own actions and how I can be better towards society. You know, I'm not like a terrible person by any means, but you know, it makes you think about the society that we live in now and history and how it was written mostly by, you know, the great males of history and I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe there is this entire under level of truth that we just 
are never going to hear. You know, how true is it? And in this movie, some moments, like I said earlier, were extremely uncomfortable to watch. But I also think that this movie should be watched by everybody so that we all learn. And again, I don't want to get preachy on your ass, but it's a real emotional roller coaster. And I think that it will make almost everybody in the theater really think about how society is formed and how, you know, history was written by people that we may have to second guess. And now I'm going to talk about Jodie Comer. She was excellent in this movie. She was absolutely fantastic, superb, and she really sells all of those scenes where she has to talk about what really happened to her. You feel the amount of hurt in her eyes, but you also feel that sense of bravery, and she's such a smart character, she's such a kind character, she's such a giving character, and you feel you know, sympathy for everything that she's had to go through. You know, her father basically sold her off just for an exchange of property, and just the bravery that she has of coming forward, especially in this time period with an allegation like that, and how she's gonna tell the truth no matter what. It's a very endearing quality to have, and I loved her character in this movie. Now, we got Matt Damon and Ben Affleck in the movie. Of course, they are the writers of this movie also. And I will admit that it took me a while to kind of get them in this movie. I'm like, oh, there's Matt Damon. Oh, there's Ben Affleck. I basically just see the actors playing dress up and trying to do these, you know, over the top voices. And I'm like, oh, there's Matt Damon in 1300s France. Oh, there's Ben Affleck in a blonde wig. Eventually, though, I understood why they were there in the movie and I thought that they were pretty good as well. I thought their performances, you know, they finally won me over. You know, it's kind of like Tom Cruise. As soon as you see Tom Cruise in a movie, I'm like, oh, there's Tom Cruise. But eventually you do see his character. But I thought that the best male actor was Adam Driver. I thought that he totally fit that time period. Of course, you know, with that long hair, he looks very medieval. And I thought he did a great job too. But, you know, Jodie Comer, by far, best performance in this movie. Um, I don't really know who's the runner up or who's the favorite for the Oscar this year, but I think, you know, she should get some nominations. But then again, every time I say that, they never get any nominations. So again, I don't really care about the Oscars. I know that she gave a great performance and I'm here to tell you guys too that she gave a good one in this movie. So with the great performances and the intriguing story and the way it was told, you know, I was completely invested. I was completely engaged. And even in the climax, I was like holding my hands so tightly together that I was like sweating. And that doesn't normally happen in a movie. Normally I'm like, okay, I'm watching a movie. I'm thinking about what works and what doesn't work. But you know, this movie really immersed me. Anytime a movie can do that, you know, that's a really good sign. And of course the production design was really great. You know, Ridley Scott knows how to make a very big, competent movie. And the action scenes, of course, even though there's not many of them, they're really well executed. The violence is just insane. Of course, Ridley Scott is known for, you know, doing that brutal historical violence, you know, with Gladiator and Exodus Gods and Kings to a certain extent. You know, I think that one was PG-13, but in this movie, you know, we see some brutal decapitations and blood and old school medieval battles. So those parts are really great in the movie, but the movie's not really about that. The movie is about Jodie Comer's Marguerite coming forward with something terrible that's happened to her and facing the consequences of this extremely systematic misogynistic society back then and seeing her bravery really prevail. Now I will admit that the final act really overshadowed the entire movie and when I mean the final act I mean you know her side of the story not just the final climax of the last duel but overall I really enjoyed this movie. I'm gonna give this movie a four to five. I don't know if I can say that I love it because there were sections of the movie where I'm like, okay, I feel like I, I've seen this already, but I've already seen it from another character's point of view where we're not really learning anything new. And of course, when you finally understand what the movie is trying to say by the third act, you're like, okay, well, you know, the first two acts of the movie were entertaining enough, but I don't think that they really serve the overall purpose of the story because it's a very, very engaging, very heart-wrenching message that you don't really know it's coming until the third act. It's still very powerful, but if you had two acts to really set that up, then I think you would have had an amazing movie on your hands. It's still a really great movie. I think it's one of the best of the year so far, but overall, I'm really glad I saw The Last Duel, and I hope you guys do too. And I'm curious to know your thoughts, so let me know down in the comment section down below. Have you guys seen The Last Duel? What did you guys think of it? And also let me know what is your favorite Ridley Scott movie. I gotta go with Gladiator on that one. I love that movie so much from beginning to end. It is just such an emotional ride, and I just, oh man, I, I don't want to get into a whole review of Gladiator, but I love that movie so much. But The Last Duel, you know, in terms of Ridley Scott's filmography, at least from the ones I've seen, 
it's up there, man. It's a really great movie and I hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, as always, if you guys like what you see here and you wanna see more videos just like this, then definitely hit like and subscribe. I really do appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.